You're live and Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Hi, Scotty. It's Jonathan. Jonathan, how lovely to hear from you, La. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you yourself. Oh, this is a privilege. I haven't heard from you for years. Well, I've been sort of, you know, overseeing some bits and bobs and touring the world. So yes. back in Glasgow, uh, visiting some family, and uh, all I can see is what a dump. Uh, Jonathan, now guys, can I tell you, Jonathan used to phone me uh, years ago. He is a massive, massive businessman. This is this is huge for the channel because Jonathan is a serious, serious world businessman. And this is quite a privilege that he's chosen to phone us. Jonathan, can I just thank you for phoning us? Well, no, listen, I feel it was my duty. Um, you know, obviously being the top broadcaster that you are, as I say, it's... It's an honour to speak to you again tonight, but, uh, you know, I've just been, you know, looking around and, you know, it's, it's abysmal. So the you've, you've come, come back it. home to Glasgow and you feel that, it, is it just Glasgow that you think's a dump or is it the UK? Uh, the UK is, you know, some, London's doing fantastic. Right. London, you know, people have uh, spring in their step. Uh, Glasgow and Jonathan, am I right in thinking you've got a house in London? Uh, Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I've got a wee house down there. I've got a sea small. Uh, Belgravia. It's the most beautiful of it. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, listen, I've had it for a few years. Yeah. It's massively increased in value. feel very lucky, um, as I say. But to show you this, it's a perfect example. My, um, you know, my house in London is probably tripled in value. The one in Glasgow has a lot of pennies because nobody wants to live in Glasgow because, you know, the, the people, they see people make Glasgow. They, they make Glasgow look bad. That's unfortunately, you know, what, what's happening. You know, the streets, I was driving down the street and, uh, you know, it's uh, my, my wheels, you know, are, are pretty expensive. And, you know, potholes, and it's not potholes, it's like junkies. It's, uh, you know, it's the amount of overweight people in Glasgow. You know, they should, they should just immediately close every takeaway. Jonathan, did you not tell me your car was was one hundred and fifty thousand or one hundred and eighty thousand? That that was the old one. The new one's slightly more expensive, right? Um, as I say, it's, so this one, as wow. I say, you know, it's it's a nice wee car. Um, but driving down the streets like Glasgow, for a start, people look at you uh, with disgust. They look at you because you you, you know you get a nice car, um, and you know you know I'm driving around potholes, damaging the car. And, you know, I see all these unemployed people. And, you know, they're on this, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called Universal Credit. Yes, of course it's, I have, um, yes, it, absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's like, a, it's, basically, it's basically my money being given to them. So they're sitting at home watching satellite television, playing playing video games, and I'm spending it, I'm giving them the money. So what I personally feel, you know, I think that, you know, so many of these unemployed people doing nothing, done nothing during the pandemic, they should be just deployed onto the streets, cleaning the streets. Maybe, you know, people like myself who are high taxpayers being allocated time. I wouldn't say a servant, but somebody maybe, they, you know, they, they'll do some tasks for me, clean the cars, clean the house. Maybe, you know, the swimming pool, they might actually get a net out and do something. Because my, my time is precious. And, you know, these people are doing nothing else. They sit there, hand out, sitting watching telly, and there's their, their sofas that they're, again, I'm paying for. I don't say own these people, but I'm paying for them, so they should do something for me. I see where you're coming from, Jonathan. You think if we had a better attitude from the people, then there'd be more successful businesses. Well, exactly. I mean, for example, these two sitting at home right now at the Universal Credit, they could be doing something productive. So, for a start, they should, you know, I, I've seen, you know, they, they log into a system, I believe, and they just get handed money. It's a... Uh, Every 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 two weeks or a month it tops up. It's a disgrace. My money's good. Yeah, but Jonathan, let's up. look at this from a practical point of view. If your car's worth, I don't know what, a couple of hundred thousand, yeah. quarter million pounds, see, 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 you're see, not going to let see. somebody just off the street take a bucket and sponge to that. I mean, it could can, can be vetted. I mean, with technology now, we can have them vetted. You would know, check for, you know, a lot of these people obviously like criminal records and that stuff, so we'd have them vetted online. Um, obviously, then it could be a probation period. Um, and we could have some, you know, I, I just feel that, you know, they're sitting there wasting their time. You know, I'm paying for them. You know, if I wanted dancing monkeys, I'd go to a zoo. 
it's uh, you know, so these people should just get back out, you know, contribute to society. I shouldn't be driving down the street, you know, my my alloy should be damaged with just in the home. We should be out there learning to fill potholes and film the potholes. You know, rather, rather than having these illegitimate children and things like that, you know. If they can't afford the children, you know, if the children people that, that they can afford them. Don't, don't have them in home. this day and age, there's no need for it. Jonathan, um, I'm very interested in your point of view. I'm going to put this to the nation and see what people think. And uh, it's, it's, it's great to hear from you because Scotland, if it goes independent, could do with a lot more wealthy business people. Listen, I think actually, you know, I could maybe have a wee folly into politics. I think people would like to see me as a leader. Yes. You know, the more I talk to people, the more they're inspired and they see you on. Well, would you not say that a successful ideas. business person is a leader? Well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm seen as a leader by, you know, my, you know, my people. So, I mean, I think the people of Scotland, the listeners, you know, whether in TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, YouTube, whatever, I'm, I'm you know, more than confident that everybody will agree with me. Anyone who doesn't agree with me needs to, you know, boil their head, as you would say. Yeah, get okay, away and buy the book. Jonathan, I'm going to put this to the I'm not going to get into an argy-bargy with you about it personally, uh, but I'm going to yeah. put it to the nation and see what the people say. It's a pleasure, Scotty, and I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, you take care. Thanks, Jonathan, and dinky do, sir. Thanks. Dinky do. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. There, that's Jonathan. I remember Jonathan from way back. A very successful guy. Uh, Slangevar, matey, says Whiskey Trek. Absolutely. Scotty boy, how you doing, my good man? Says Big Hindo. I heard one person say that so-and-so was not charismatic enough. I'd prefer a boring, safe prime minister. Well, you see, when I was young, Aidan, politicians were not charismatic in that way. Well, I suppose you can't say that somebody like Winston Churchill, but he had a job to do. His job was to beat the Nazis. Uh, so, you know, he definitely had charisma. But politicians in general were people that just got on with it. You didn't really hear much of them, and you occasionally saw a headline in the newspapers about them, that sort of thing. And that was your politicians. Uh, you know, you know they've put a stop to oil and gas. Yeah, but I don't think they should be putting a stop to oil and gas. I mean, you know, the UK 